Welcome to this presentation about Nexus DB. Nexus DB has been under development for many, many years, and it's based on industry standards backed by both development from the real world plus the research that we have actually conducted in house ourselves. As a consequence, Nexus is very stable and a very mature product. In this presentation, we will showcase a number of the features and functionality that Nexus DB provides to Delphi and C builder developers. To illustrate the ease of getting started with Nexus, we'll build a simple client server application in a matter of minutes and then demonstrate some of the power of the engine. The presentation will conclude with a roadmap of the new features under construction that we intend to release over the next 18 months or so. Let's have a look at a, a few of the features of Nexus DB. Nexus was built to be an ultra-fast database client server engine. It was built from the ground up in Delphi for the Delphi and C++ builder developers. It's nimble enough to be fully embedded in your desktop applications and yet powerful enough to be your primary database server. There are no annoying DLLs to be distributed. Secondly, it's a royalty-free database system with features that rival other more heavily licensed products. That is, it introduces unique features for Delphi developers while further developing on those initial core strengths of stability, performance and flexibility. Finally, Nexus DB implements the core SQL 2003 standard. Now, that functionality is missing from a lot of other SQL engines. In addition, Nexus augments this 2003 standard with extensions to expose Nexus specific functionality. For instance, drop table if exists. I'm sure we've all had fun in games uh, determining if a table exists before dropping it. Well, so what's in the future for Nexus DB? What are we actually working on? What's our roadmap through to the end of next year, say? Well, over that period of time, we'll be releasing a number of significant new versions, including extensions to our core concepts of stability, performance, and flexibility. Now, what I'm about to list for you here now is stuff that we are actually working on. Some of it we've actually been working on for quite literally over six years. Anyway, what we envisage will be coming out from our research labs will be the following. Full native Android support. Initially, we'll release client support and then a core engine. Uh, the core engine is turning out to be an interesting exercise in bashing your head against a brick wall for those of us who have uh, actually had to write engines for Android. Um, very interesting. The Intel uh, CPUs are are uh, very mature compared to the ARMS chips. Uh, the next thing that we'll be releasing will be the full text indexing enhancements which we've included into our blueprint, into our actual theoretical document that we work on here prior to the implementation. So the theory on that has already been done, uh, was actually completed many years ago. The implementation is proven to be tricky but we will have that out soon. And, of course, something that's also been in development for the last two to three years is a new file format. We're currently at Nexus DB version 4. This new file format will be version 5, and it's optimized for solid-state drives. That, of course, fits hand-in-hand -hand with the native Android support for the core engine. And finally, something that we've been working on for longer than the above three is the long-awaited rewrite of the SQL engine, which we've dubbed the project NXSQL2. Now, this, our, our aim with this, and we're getting there, is to, port, is to support the full and complete standard for SQL 2003. Currently, our SQL 1 engine uh, supports, or implements, I should say, the core of that standard. With SQL 2, and X SQL 2 that we're putting out, we're doing the core, the extensions to the core, and the vendor-specific features as per the extension specs in that standard. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, all of this. It's actually finally seems to be coming together for us in terms of these extra features and functionalities that we're putting out. It's always a race against the in, uh, increase and improvement in technologies, but hey, that's what keeps the, uh, the hair grey and the spirit supposedly young. Thank you very much for your time. Nexus DB is much more than just a replacement DBMS for the deprecated BDE. The Nexus suite includes components and tools to build and deploy enterprise-level, fully-featured database systems that scale from single-user embedded application through to applications that can be deployed at a global level. Consider these features. 
Nexus comes with intuitive developer and DBA management tools. There you have flexible deployment. You can uh, deploy a fully embedded application, a client server standalone, or a registered Windows service with full event logging. Transactional support has three different levels. Snapshot, file safe, and nested transactions are all available. You can also perform online real-time backups in any environment, including 24-7. It's basically maintenance-free. The server reuses buffers and automatically balances indices. Obviously, with royalty-free licensing, once you've purchased Nexus DB, that is it. You can deploy without any additional fees or per user additional costs. There are login rights and securities on the Nexus server, and advanced industry standard encryption and security keeps the server side data safe. Let's now look at what you get with Nexus DB. Once you've installed it into the IDE, then you will find that you have 49 components added to your Nexus DB tab in the tool palette. Now that's pretty impressive. That's why we make the claim that we have the best Delphi C++ Builder development um, DBMS system available. You get full source code and if you need if security and encryption is an issue and you wish to get the best, then the Enterprise Edition adds a further 18 additional components to this palette. What a bargain. Okay, what else have we got though? We've also got additional drivers and tools to supplement, especially these may be of interest when deploying to additional sites. Allow your products to be deployed and your customers' data to be accessed with use of these tools and techniques. Enterprise Manager, that's the main developer and DBA tool for creating and maintaining your databases. There's a server user interface if you decide not to deploy as a Windows service. This interface has an easy to use uh, view that even your end users will love. Oh, just stumbling over a few words there for the heck of it. The sensible default settings can easily be changed. Basically, the default settings are good to go. Most of our developers don't even bother changing those default sending settings. There's a PHP connector pack to allow you to access directly from PHP without using the ODBC driver if you don't want. We've also got an ADO.NET provider which will fully integrate into the latest versions of Visual Studio. And of course, there is an ODB um, connector driver that you can use to connect from Excel, Word, or even from the ASP for web pages. Hi, my name is David Guest. I've been in the computer business since 1957. Currently, I'm a programmer at Phelps Memorial Hospital Center in Sleepy Hollow, New York. I've used Nexus DB since the very beginning, July 2003. It is an incredible product. I've built over a hundred databases with it, and I've never ever had a single instance of data corruption or data loss. It just runs and runs and runs. It does not need a DBA. It is simple to deploy and monitor. The enterprise manager is so easy to use, it doesn't need a manual. And I can fit a database up to 32 gigs in the memory, even in the 32-bit machine. It really is incredible. For our first project, let's build a genuine client-server database application which connects to a remote Nexus DB server. To make it more interesting, we'll embrace the Delphi RAD philosophy and create the entire application without writing a single line of code. The Nexus components in XEA allow us to not only do this, but also to view how the application looks in the IDE. Firstly, let me show you what the final system will look and perform like. I remind you this is a genuine client-server application created and which can be distributed without writing a single line of code. <laughs> Let's face it, Delphi rad rocks. So, here's a server that is running on this development PC as you can see here. Note that there are no connections open to the server at this moment. Okay, let's boot the application. I have a shortcut over here. And up pops in time the familiar BioLife table from DB Demos. I've already converted this table from Paradox to Nexus DB using our importer utility. Now, that's a bit uninteresting. This is client server. Let's boot a couple of more instances 
so that we can see this running on different records in the same table at the same time. So we bring this one down over here so that we can see what we're looking at. And if we bring the server up here, we can see that we've got three open sessions, three connected transports, messages have been sent, actual data has been sent and received as shown on the server here. Okay. Now, obviously this is not file sharing. All the clients are making data requests through the same NX server. You can see here that they're all logged in with the Nexus DBM server. Now, let's, uh, with a bit of playing around, let's see how we can do this. Remember, not a line of code. So I'll put this down, I will close this off, I will close this off, and I will close this off. Let's look at the project NX88. And boot it up, I have it sitting here in the background, and here it actually sits. Now, as you can see, if we go to the code tab, there's not a line of code here, okay? The entire client application is created visually in the design pane. To that end, let's remove all the components and I will build the whole project again. It truly does not take much time at all. So, with our blank canvas, we need to put down the components necessary to connect to a database on the server that I was showing you here before. There are now no connections, obviously, because I closed those off before, and there's none even from the IDE itself. So, we need the following components linked together. Go to the tool palette, and we'll go to our Nexus tab. So, what we need is a remote server engine. We need a TCP IP transport, the so-called WinSock transport. Now we need a session to that server, we need a database within that session, and we're going to look at a table connected to that database. Now, in this component chain, we need to link these together. Again, they can all be done visually, as I was saying to you before, it's pretty straightforward. We just click on each component in turn. This is the TCP one, so we will set it to the loopback adapter 1.7.0.0.1 and we will make that active at design time. The If we now look just for a moment at the server we can see that we've got one connected transport no sessions. If we now go to this remote server engine connect it to the transport by simply double clicking it and design time active move to the session connect that to that server engine, again we'll make that active. Now we come to the database component which is quite important. Again, with the database component we connect it to the session that's there and now we need to make it design time active and we notice that no alias name or path is set. You must set that first. Fortunately everything else up here in the component chain has been set active at design time so we should see all of the databases that are on that server that we are connected to. So we'll connect to DB demos and we'll make that active and this time we get a good clean connection. Go to the table and just connect it to the database, move down to the tables and we'll connect to the BioLife table as such. Now here's an interesting thing, we want to see it at design time, which is true, but we also want to, without writing code, we want it to be active at run time, so we enable that property as well. We're now actually ready to go, so back to the uh, tool palette, this time we need to move up to our data access, get a data source, bring that over, connect the data source to the table, which is pretty easy, the data set in table 1. Go back to our tool palette. This time we'll go to the data controls, we'll whack a grid on the form, and as you all know it's pretty straightforward, we connect that to our data source, and as you can see we can uh, the actual data from the BioLife table is now available to be viewed at design time. Again, no lines of code written, a pretty neat thing. The, if I recall correctly, I also put down a DB image over here from memory, and 
and I connected that up obviously to the object inspector, data source, data field will be the graphic, there's the graphic, and there's our little fishy, 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 and we can scroll through. Oh, that reminds me, we also put in on here a navigator. So there's our navigator, I like to stretch it out a bit and make it look pretty, move that down a bit, move it in, uh, here we go, OCD jumps to the fore, and a oh, that's not very nice, is it? There we go, and there we have it. I've built the entire form, I'll save that. I've built the entire form without writing a single line of code. We go back, and as promised, no code. Again, we have one open connection to our server here. There are two sockets, obviously, back and forth. And if we now run this, we should have exactly the same result as we had before. Little connection, and there we go. There is the program running. As I said, I've got a link to it here, so we can boot that up as well, and watch that, and have two different sessions running. In fact, if we really wanted to be interested, we could... Uh, oh, that's interesting to see. I forgot to connect up. Thank heavens for Delphi IDE. I connect, forgot to connect the DB navigator to the data source. If we now run that, and uh, hey presto again and this time the DV navigator is working just as we wanted well I hope you get from that a sense of how easy it is to create a genuine client server database application remember this is not file sharing this is client server all requests to the database are ported through the one server engine My databases are backed up nightly uh, what, without having to be closed. It's just incredible. And I can deploy it as many times as I want anywhere in the world with no deployment costs and no per seat royalties. And now with .NET, it allows me to work with ASP.NET and build beautiful web-based products that have the support of Nexus DB an extremely fast and flexible database system. Try it. You'll love it. In this second example, rather than build an application for you, I'm going to go to one of the examples that comes with Nexus DB. I'll actually go to a Delphi example here. As you can see, there's a lot of samples distributed and example programs for you that will actually help you learn and pick up Nexus uh, in a pretty short space of time. In this case, I'm going to go to the remoting because you would have noticed there was a lot of remoting components. So we'll go to the remoting and let's do some client-client messaging. There's three examples in here. It's quite uh, interesting what you can do with remoting. Uh, in this case, I've already actually uh, uh, pro oh, sorry, compiled and built the program. Wow, we're really getting into the talk here now. Uh, and I have the server here booted up. The server is going to have nothing to do with the database. This is just purely client-to-client -client talking. So when my form connects up, you'll notice that there's a session started. The second user logs in, we've got two sessions, no databases. So let's go user one, promiscuous and connect. This will be user two, promiscuous, connect. Still the two sessions, no databases. This has got nothing to do with databases. We'll see later when we look at the source code and the visual components necessary to create this example. Now, uh, what the, this does, obviously, is it allows chatting between your different client applications via a common Nexus database server. So in here, I'll just say uh, simple message to number two. I'll get my client list get two and I'll send the message to two and not surprisingly simple message to two appears over here for user two uh, let's add another couple of users just for the heck of it and we can see straight away that the four sessions have been established with the database server let's go in and have a look so this will be user three connected user 4, connect them, 
get a client list here, client list there. We need to refresh the client lists up here. And this time, user four is going to say hi to all, and he's actually going to broadcast that to everyone. And up the message hi to all has now gone around to these other users. So three respawns hi back and to all of you as well and we will broadcast that and that again goes back to everyone okay so that's a very interesting little thing it allows you to actually chat via a nexus server to other users that are connected to that server as well here's the application the example application I talked about before there's only three components that's all that's necessary the main thing here is that our remote server is connected via to a windsock transport and as per my last example where I built I'm using the loopback adapter because everything's just one on here the main PC uh, my main development PC here at the moment the number of lines of code to achieve this it is actually, as you can see, less than 200 lines of code, code, including all of the stuff that Delphi pads around the actual source code. So it's all in there. It's simple. There's some comments there for you to, to, to see, to read as you go through. It's pretty straightforward. Well, that was what I wanted to finish off with, and I hope you have enjoyed this little presentation. I'll catch you another time. Bye. But I just wanted to kick off a few questions first, and then everyone, you can put questions uh, for the Nexus DB team in the Q&A area. And maybe it's on the website. I brought the home page up just so people can go. You just go to nexusdb.com. There's lots of information there. What's the, is there a, do you, a memory footprint for the Nexus client when you're putting components, or does it grow based on how many components or APIs you use? Um, yes, it will. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how big it can be with the maximum amount of components, but it's all modularly built up. Every component will be in its individual units. So uh, if you want a small client with, uh, with base functionality, it'll be smaller than if you need to use all the components. Okay. And then is there a limit to the size the database can be? Uh, for practical purposes, uh, basically it's the um, size of your hard drive currently. It will probably be in the petabyte range or something. Thorsten might have a more detailed answer, <laughs> but it, it, is, uh, it is large. And then you mentioned for the enterprise edition, there's uh, encryption capabilities. Is, is, is there any specific standards that are supported or the developer? Uh, yes, we have yeah, a AES uh, 256 encryption uh, built in. Uh, both uh, we have both the transports and um, table encryption comes in the enterprise edition. Excellent. Uh, yeah, there are five different transports and a number of different encryption engines for tables as well for different purposes. Okay, and then there's questions in the Q&A log if Thorsten wants to type in. Uh, you, you said he wasn't feeling well. Uh, there's one here that's maybe more of a question for for me as it relates to DB Artisan and our database tools. Is there a is there a way to connect? I know your studio supports ODBC connection, so for looking at the data models, uh, your studio should be able to connect the ODBC to Nexus DB. So, yeah, via ODBC it should work. Uh, I don't believe there's any direct support for our tools in in those database tools. Yeah, but I've I've connected most o through ODBC, not a problem at all. Yeah, yeah, so, and that should work. Some of the other tools like DB Optimizer, uh, that has specific knowledge of specific databases for doing uh, optimization or, or profiling. So it relies on some APIs for different databases. Uh, it could be, though, that DB Artisan through ODBC, not a DB Artisan specialist, could allow a DBA to do some work. But in the case of Nexus DB, how would I do sort of DB at database administrator work? I'd use the the server console, is that what I would do? Uh, no, we have a separate um, binary we call the enterprise manager. 
which contains all of all of the functionality to edit your tables and databases uh, and where you can run SQL and create um, views, source procedures, etc. All of that is built into the Enterprise Manager tool. Eric asked, can the client determine how many total connections the server has at the time? Is there a component or API? I know you showed it in the database server console. Um, yes, uh, there is a server info plugin you can use on the client side and you can then bring all that statistic information back to the client. So yes, you can get that information. There was a question, I guess it related to our data snap or multi-tier technology, how Nexus DB could be used in that kind of a multi-tier architecture or multi-tier web as well, right? I mean, you put Nexus DB on the server or on a remote server, is that how you might do a, a multi-tier system? Um, yes, yeah, that should work. Uh, same as with all the databases, I expect. Um, you certainly could use it if, in such a system. Eric is asking, what's the best way to replicate a Nexus database on multiple servers, local and cloud, maybe? Uh, we don't have directly a replication yet. There's something that's being worked on. Uh, we can do live um, backups from the database while it, while it is in use. So, yeah, so replication is in the research lab at the moment. Richard was asking about uh, fast report. I mean, fast report should use any, connect to any data set. So, uh, yes, it works with, perfectly with fast report. Uh, fast report uses T table descendants uh, on T query descendants, which is, we have components that are descendant of so low, so that works perfectly fine. You actually have uh, fast report reports built into our enterprise managed uh, DBA tool. What does the trial version of Nexus DB allow you to do? Uh, it allows you to do pretty much everything you could with the full version. It just uh, it has a time limit on how long it will run before you need to stop the server and start it again. Uh, other than that, you can make make the database as big as you want or uh, as many connections as you want but uh, after an hour or two you will have to restart the server but it's always full features so you can test everything trial installer is uh, easy to just click through and it'll install binaries and components all for you including help okay let's see i'm finding person was putting a few things in the chat window so let me uh so 30, he says, for the size, it's uh, very large. 32 uh, goes up to AES-256 as well for encryption. Statistics can be accessed from the client about what's happening on the server. Nexus DB implements the required iProvider interfaces. Everything with third-party products uh, to connect to the database. And also there are third-party products for change logging. So I'm not sure if I answered all the questions correctly, or Ivan did. Yeah, I mean, the, the, everything was answered pretty much okay. I mean, the main thing is this. If anyone's got any questions at all, they just need to come to our news groups. I mean, Thorsten and Ivan haunt those news groups. Plus, we have a number of um, Nexus DB experts, people like David Guest that you saw before. Ha! Hey, did you get that one, David? Embarcadero has David I. Nexus DB has David G. Um, and look, there's always people on our news groups and they can answer questions and uh, anything that anyone wants to know, especially we find a lot of people talking uh, and wanting to know things like uh, what have our customers experienced in the real world? Because we've got people that have, have converted over from SQL Server, uh, Oracle, usually as a consequence of the cost because of, with royalty-free distribution, I mean, that's a really big plug for us. And uh, especially with the size of it. In terms of one of the questions before, the size of a table, remember tables, tables can be spread over a number of files, physical files, and any one of those files can be 256 terabytes in size. So as Ivan was saying at the beginning when you asked the question about how large can we support, well, we can literally support databases that are ginormous, certainly larger than uh, what's available now. So we're looking forward to the quantum um, drives when they come out. Yeah, that was a bit of a joke, actually. My apologies. No, it's okay. <laughs> I think the other thing is once you, ha you know, having a 
one price and then you can deploy. When you start going into mobile devices where you're putting your apps in an app store um, and the users are using them, you don't want to have to think about that's very true, David. I mean, and that's um, also why uh, it's a pity that we've just got only one Thorsten. Uh, but uh, there's, uh, yes, when we get the, we're going to maintain that pricing all the way through. That's our big thing here. It's, you know, if you're a Delphi developer, you come, you pay once, and you deploy uh, as many times as you want. Um, I, it's, you know, it's the, it's the best model to go for. Uh, Alf had a question, has a question about, was there a free version of Nexus DB? I actually, I believe there is. Uh, Ivan manages that one. He might be able to answer that. There's actually a uh, there's an embedded uh, version that doesn't include source because we actually, uh, if you buy the full version, the standard or the enterprise, you get full source. But uh, Ivan, uh, you can chime in on this one. Uh, what what's the didn't we did we have a free version? Or we end up not bothering with that after a while. I think there was a lack of uh, interest in that. Uh, yes, we do still have the embedded free version. It's uh, on our website under the download section. You'll find it there for download. Yeah. yeah, David. So with that one, if anyone wants to, I mean, that's a very good point. If anyone wants to, if you want to test it out, then, yeah, just go straight to the downloads there and trial versions. Where's the free? They're free embedded. So you can actually create an embedded application that's a genuine single user client server. People have to just learn to remember to wrap their heads around the concept, the difference in the concepts between uh, file sharing and client server. And yeah, they can build whatever they want and do what they like with that. Doesn't cost a cent. Obviously, we hope they come back and upgrade to full multi user client server. So again, that was under downloads, uh, free yeah. embedded version. Okay. One other one, how about transferring data from full version to embedded version? Well, no, no, that, no, uh, okay. This is the thing about client server, right? Yeah? The tables are tables of tables, okay? There's only one table version if you consider the latest version, Nexus DB version 4, right? Now, the Nexus server engine either sits separately like in the demos where you saw the GUI interface, which then accesses those tables as files on the disk, or in the embedded applications, the actual NX server engine is part of your application. So you have one exit to distribute plus whatever database files. Those files can be accessed via either the embedded server application or a Nexus engine, but at any one point in time, only by one engine. That's what client server means. Oh, I hope I didn't um, make that sound too complex, but um, uh, for us, we live this stuff. So, I mean, I can't help but give, <laughs> give a long drawn out uh, uh, answer. Sorry. What does a developer need to do uh, alpha testing if they move from a certain version of Nexus DB to another version? Is there? Is it just? Uh, well, Thor Thorson's got the technical answer to that, but the short answer is this: as you go up the, we have normally backward compatibility, except for when a restructure or a restructure event occurs on a table. So if you have a Nexus version three, so with the major version numbers, right? Our higher version servers can read them. But as soon as they cause a restructure, and that might be a balancing of indices or whatever, then the format will automatically in the background be upgraded. It's actually, thanks for mentioning that, David, or for the person who um, asked that question. Yes, we it actually does it. You don't even have to worry about that. The only issue is if somebody was running, say, a version three, a version two, I should say, uh, server and your tables have a, have uh, upgraded in the background without you realizing it to version three, you then won't be able to access them with your version two engine. Of course, we always encourage people to go to the latest versions, but the reason for this is our major versions, like version one, version two, version three, version four, we stay to the same version number if the uh, file format is going to be the same if the file format doesn't change. So for any one major version, the file format across all the tables will always be the same. When you go to the next version, or when we need to change that something, then we move up the version. So for version four, we're going to the 64-bit. Uh, there are some other changes that Thorsten put in, I believe, into the uh, into the headers in some of the tables. And Bimbo's, uh, Bimbo, sorry, my Bingo. Uh, 
uh, it got upgraded. There was a change. And again, as I was saying, as soon as the Nexus version 4 accesses the version 3 or earlier tables, it will automatically upgrade that in the background. You don't even have to worry about it. And the uh, point two, someone asked about the DBA tools, David. Um, as David Guest said in his testimonial, it's they, we, one of the things that surprises people is that there's automatic balancing of indices. That happens on the fly, so you don't have to re-index your tables every week or every month, depending on usage. That happens. They're always balanced. These are B star trees. Let's see. There's a question here. It was was Nexus DB version one related to the Turbo Power products? Uh, there's a nice history on our, if you go through our website, we've actually got a little story there about what actually happened. So if I can just diverge for two minutes, sorry, David, it's a little bit of a story. What happened was, uh, as we all know, Turbo Power Software Company went out of business. Now, we had been actively involved, Ivan, myself, and Thorsten, helping Turbo Power to develop the next version of Flash Filer. And it was going to be Flash Filer 3. And we gave them all of our work, which was 99.9% .9 Thorsten's work. I actually, that devalues what I can do. But it was the majority, the greater majority of it was, I, was Thorsten's work. And we gave it to them one month before they went out of business. They didn't even tell us. And then they came to us and said, hey, we want to, um, you know, what do you, want, what do you want to do with it? We went, well, we'll go with this baby and we'll carry it. So Nexus version 1, in a fashion, is a rewrite because we couldn't, because of the GPL, and we have to honour, obviously, the licensing. Uh, we don't want any troubles with litigation, etc. So Nexus version 1 is a complete rewrite of Flash Filer version 3, which was never saw the light of day. I hope that makes sense, but it's literally a rewrite, um, which gave Thorson the opportunity to make it quite... Um, Nice, actually, to be to be honest with you, it uh, actually enabled us, gave us a bit of an opportunity to to tidy things up and go our own way on that. Um, so there's a little history lesson. As I said, I believe there's a history page somewhere on there um, about us, or somewhere through there, um, or in the about section. You might be able to find a little story there about that. Let's see. Oh, and then Alpha was mentioning it was no problem to read Flash Filer 2 from the modeler of Nexus DB3 or from the data. Yeah. Yeah, we actually even, um, when we put um, Nexus DB1 out, we actually included a tool which would convert Flash Filer to tables into Nexus tables, and also you could run it over your source code, and it would pretty much get almost all of your source code converted from the Flash Filer components, you know, the DFMs and the PAS files, to the other one. Uh, Eric was asking about, he's on the Nexus DB website, and is confused about the pricing for a Delphi developer. Which pack would I, would he need? Okay, if you okay, actually just stop there, Dave. The full Monty pack is if someone really really gets into it. The full Monty pack is the best value for money. It gives you everything. But if we go down a little bit further, we will if we just go down perhaps another page. And uh, hold on, hold database engine. Hold on. There we go. Database, the one that says $750 on the side, right, Molly? That's the Nexus DB developer source. That's it, that one there. That is pretty much for the first purchase, right? Um, what is, uh, let's say, XE3 and up. Oh, I see, I get it. My apologies, sorry. It's just the, um, the screen resolution on what I've got here is, um, you know, that there is your first price. Then on renewal, it actually, uh, I believe it's uh, 450 or something on renewal. I have to check 450 or 500 on renewal, but that's your first year's price is 750 there. Notice the professional edition underneath that. That's the one that includes all of the uh, uh, very strong level AES 256 encryption as well as data uh, data table um, uh, uh, stuff encryption as well as over the network and wire blah 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 is 1150. Okay. So that that's the one that you'd go for. But I I, I strongly recommend to everyone um, to download the free embedded source version because like like uh, we were saying before fully functional everything's in there just that you're limited to just one person um, and doesn't cost a cent or you can use the trial version and use it with multi-user just with that uh, little nag after an hour or two when you have to reboot the server yeah. yeah we find people that get the full monty are those that usually they want like the odbc driver as well um or the server license plugin and then they just say well what the heck because then they can then distribute to their users and they, they it's, it's worth it you know right? that's the idea of the full monty actually you've raised a point there david or you as well your um inquirer has we probably should highlight ivan that uh, Nexus DB developer source there. That's our sort of main intro product. 
basically. And in that huge page of products there, it's a little bit hard to uh, determine that. And Thorsten mentioned uh, newer versions will always be able to access older tables. Absolutely, yes. That is that's, uh, what I was trying to convey before. Is absolutely correct, yeah. That's uh, Thorsten's driving thing with this. Excellent. And then for those of you who are on here, if you also want to check out, uh, we did a spotlight in the in the in a previous quarter on the Nexus Quality Suite, so you can you can check that out as well. If you go to the Nexus DB homepage, uh, two products are listed there: the Nexus DB database and the Quality Suite. So, uh, actually, David, we might put a small plug in there. There's a, we're actually working on a third product as well, which is a source. Oh, it's a it's a basically it's a scheduling rostering engine. It's actually come out of um, about uh, 20 years of research that we've been that uh, we've been plugging away at in our spare time to do with some consulting we've been doing over the years, and um, we're actually going to batch the batch that up for the uh, for Delphi developers too, actually. So, but that's not going to happen for 12 months anyway. As there was one question about PHP, and I saw PHP listed in the full Monty. Yep. <laughs> you can also purchase it separately if you wish. Okay. And then uh, Eric said thanks. He found all the information that he needed in the in the page and the buy now page. So yep. no worries, Eric. It's all there, mate. And come along to our news groups and have a chat to the guys anyway. Is there a migration utility, a data importer from from different databases, including Advantage DB? Is what Davis asked. And and I found on the Nexus DB website there's this importer suite, uh, which allows you to go from different data access points, whether it's ADO or Microsoft Data Objects, anything that can be connected in that way. So if you've got those kinds of connections to Advantage DB, uh, you should be able to use the importer suite to migrate your data and so on to a Nexus DB database. Uh, there's another question about using the access components. Are they fully cross-platform on the client side? or are they still tied to Windows for all of the Nexus DB uh, components, uh, non-visual components? Uh, currently, the components are on Windows, but there's ongoing work on an Android, Android version. Let me just grab that. And uh, Alf had a question about if he's using an application, for example, that's using SQLite, uh, how easy or difficult is it to translate or redesign to use Nexus DB uh, instead, so does that go back to the migration suite, or sorry, the import suite, or is there something more as it relates to SQLite? I think there's an ODBC driver for SQLite. Depends on what components you use for SQLite access, yeah, whether you're calling the library directly or you might be using FireDAC, for example, uh, but uh, as far as getting the data over, Okay, so he's saying the Nexus DB components are modeled after the after the BDE T table and T query style components. So this question about database backup utility. Let's see. There's a built-in hot backup function uh, using the Enterprise Manager. Okay, great. I was just mentioning that they have customers with tables in the hundreds of gigabytes uh, to the terabyte range. I'll assessing what the upgrade price uh, from Nexus DB3 to Nexus DB4. Renewals are annually. Reactivation is if the support has expired for some time. Okay. There is no cost for major version upgrades. Oh, all right. Excellent. Okay. Active support includes that. So as long as you keep your support contract up, just keep re getting the newer version. Neville asks a question. He goes, is there a Fire Deck provider driver yet? That's a showstopper issue for us. ODBC is not good enough, especially when alternative databases have native drivers. Uh, there is the FireDAC ODBC bridge, which you can use, and I've used that to talk to other uh, data sources. Uh, we have had some contact with Dimitri, and okay. we currently have a, an internal beta version. It's not quite ready for public beta yet, but uh, it should be available later this year. Yeah, Excellent. we are uh, determined to finish that implementation. It seems to be much more requested than the DB Express was, so we are certainly going to get that delivered. 
Yeah, David, yeah, on that, we're also, uh, as mentioned in the roadmap, we're also providing our own native drivers to Android for client-side connection from Android mobile devices as well. But as Ivan said, at the moment, we're really working hard with Dimitri to ensure that we get the uh, uniform Fire DAC drivers uh, done. It's just a matter of uh, time. This is from Kevin, and he's asking, are there any plans for a Java JDBC driver for those of us who also run Java solutions on the server, the JDBC ODBC bridge is getting deprecated, so we wouldn't want to rely on it. Uh, yeah, actually, oddly enough, uh, a year ago we had um, a similar request for that too. It's on the to-do list. Um, the yeah, the JDB uh, native JDB uh, driver. Uh, JDB OZ, JDBC as it was previously uh, is something that actually we'll look at. It's a, a sadly it's at the bo it's at the um, it's on the list that's yet to be started. To be honest with you, we haven't actually started that one yet. But yes, that is on our list of things to do. We probably not start that till next year, sadly. I just don't want to lead anyone astray. For those that are listening, for the audience out there, Thorsten's our main guy. I mean, he is the principal research scientist inside Nexus DB. He's the guy that's conceptualized and built the entire thing. We actually work from, oh, that's something I should have mentioned too. We actually don't just like write the code and bang, away we go. We sit down and design it. We've actually got an internal document, our blueprint for our engine. So our engine is properly documented fully, and by document I don't mean lines of code documented, I mean the actual concepts and the structure. There's actual research goes on inside of Nexus DB, genuine research, where we've uh, put stuff down, we've tested, started, set forth hypotheses, experimented, and we maintain that. Now, Thorson's the architect of that document. Uh, this is pretty much, um, I'm not uh, overstating the fact, there am I, Ivan. I mean, it's actually, we, we have Thorsten to thank for this, for the vision of Nexus DB. It also makes it easiest for us to extend to other uh, hardware and operating system combinations as well. Uh, Michael just asked a question. Can you talk a little more about a conversion utility and what it can do? Uh, sure, I can do that. We've actually had a conversion utility, a data converter, uh, since we first started, the initial one was for ADO and for Flash Filer and for BDE, uh, and also for uh, I believe we also had an MDB access converter as well, but that of course goes via the ADO if necessary. Um, conversions pretty straightforward. The actual uh, actually that raises another point in terms of conversion of the databases as you move between the major versions of Nexus DB. Our engine will automatically upgrade your tables if you've got. For instance, say Nexus version three tables, and you want to upgrade into version four, they do that. But I'm, pretty, I'm sure Michael's question is to do with the coming from another database engine. Um, as I was saying, BDE, if they're paradox tables, no problems. We have a converter. I use that, for instance, on the example I was showing with the BioLife. Uh, we've also, you will find that the source code that's provided with that, others have used that for specialist conversions from other engines as well. So um, other databases, I should say, other database um, as well. So, and also you could put a question out to our news group. The guys there are very friendly. Uh, we've got a, a pretty loyal following, uh, as happens with any database engine. I mean, it's not something you just swap and change on a whim. You've got to, uh, everyone's obviously very, very, uh, invested in their in their database engine in the background. So uh, yeah, just ask questions. You may even find that if it's a specific uh, database that you're converting from, that, that someone else has already written a conversion utility and will probably be more than happy to um, supply it to you. Or just talk to us and we'll have a crack at it for you. And, and Thorsten, Thorsten mentioned full source for the importer utility is included, and it's a modular design that allows adding new source engines if your database isn't supported. So as you can see, we've actually, yeah. some people contributed things, for instance, the DBI SAM converter. Um, uh, gee, there's a few other things there as well. I know we had a KDB one up there as well. There's an Apollo one there, but it looks as well. Some of these would have been converted, would have been donated by our um, our current users, but as Thorson was saying, the full source is always supplied, so people can get and modify it and extend the converter. Yes, um, it's also worth noting that we actually also has a source code converting utility for those who come from other engines like the BDE to help out with that process. Okay, so if I use a, a T-table, you'll convert that to... 
to the, the equivalent on yeah, the T annex tables and stuff. Okay. Yeah, that is correct. David. We've actually got a source converter. I've forgotten about that. The source converter um, is it picks up virtually 100% of all conversions if you're coming from Flash Filer. Of course, given our heritage, that's not too surprising. And on the BDE, except for some of the SQL, which needs to be hand tweaked, uh, it does a pretty good job on all BDE applications as well. What is Thorsten's goodies? Oh, <laughs> if you want to get really technical and see how the big guy thinks. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, here's for the guys who, who, who really like to get deep into Del into Delphi. Orson said, uh, thank you, everyone. He's Maybe he's going to sleep now. Anyway, yeah. thank you, guys, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. That was great. Yep. Thank you, David. Thank you, uh, people listening Thanks in. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.